Okay. We're going to do uh, proxy chains one more time with two chains. And we are then going to do a reverse SSH VPN. And we'll uh, be running Wireshark to uh, <coughs> look at some of this traffic. So let's start. I'm, uh, let's see what my client is. It's 176. Let's go into our proxy chains file again. Uh, hopefully, you've already watched the other proxy video I created. <coughs> We'll scroll down here. DNS is still commented out. And now what I want you to see is that I have two HTTP proxies. All right. So I have one, which is a different Kali machine on my local network. It's a squid proxy that I just set up. And the next one is also an HTTP proxy at this address, at the DigitalOcean box. Same, again, 3128. So what's going to happen is any application that we proxify <clears throat> should go in order to this machine and then to this machine. Although if we uh, were to go up in the con um, into the configuration file, uh, we can set it to random as well. So let's save this. Well, I guess it's already saved. <clears throat> and let's uh, try running Firefox on its own first. Well, actually, it doesn't really matter. Let's let's just start with proxy chains. Call the application, and let's go to uh, what is my IP address. <clears throat> All right, so it shows that I'm at 159.203.67.247. That's the DigitalOcean machine. So this machine is receiving requests from another proxy, uh, um, but originally from this VM. We close this down, we can get an idea of what's going on. <clears throat> so this is the first proxy. This is the second proxy. And then there are my requested uh, websites. And here I am on the client 176. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna, let's jump over to a different window. It'll take me a second here. Okay, so there's a different. Uh, nope, I made a mistake there. Try that. Oh, wait, no, it did work. It did work. I'm on the Wireshark screen. Great. So I'm going to start up Wireshark. And I'm going to do port 3128. Um, and pick an interface. And let's start. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you won't see this part, but I'm going to run and jump into the other window and start up the uh, proxy chains Firefox again. I'll go to uh, what is my IP address website again. Oh, my lookup limit has been exceeded. Well, that's fine. Go somewhere else. Doesn't really matter. Oh, whoops, sorry. So let's take a look at some of this traffic. I guess I should stop running from running for a moment. <clears throat> so let's take a look. Let's go to the top here. So we can see that my client machine is talking to 169, which is the first proxy. And we can see right here, there's a connection made from the proxy to my DigitalOcean box. And I guess this is repeated quite a number of times. <clears throat> So this is kind of cool. There's the request. 
And then this one makes the same request. Okay, neat. All right, so let's uh, quit out of there. And so if we jump back to the other machine, which will take me a second. I'll get used to this screen capture software. <clears throat> So there you see it again. The two hops. If we go into proxy chains again. You could set up uh, a random proxy. And I think I may have said this in the other video. There are websites where we can grab uh, <coughs> grab different uh, IPs for different countries and and do these different levels of chains <clears throat> okay next up let's do a uh, reverse ssh vpn so i've talked about the poor man's vpn before <clears throat> i do have other videos uh, actually a few years old now that you could check out first um, with this reverse ssh vpn the idea is for this machine 76 Let's pretend um, <clears throat> he's at work. Okay, this is let's pretend this is a work machine, and let's pretend I also have a Windows machine on the same network. Okay, and let's say I'm, I'm at work and I uh, from Monday to Friday I use my Linux machine, I use my Windows machine, everything's great. If I want to, I can our desktop uh, directly to this machine. All right, yeah, that's perfect. No problems. First problem comes up when, uh, okay, well, I go home, it's Saturday, and I don't have access. Let's say I don't have access anymore to the, the company, and they don't allow SSH in. They don't allow me remote desktop directly to the Windows v, uh, machine. And yes, you would say this is a good uh, time to have a VPN, but maybe they don't have a VPN, or maybe I've been restricted for some reason. Who knows what the reasoning is? But the cool thing here is we can still access the Windows box if we do a few things uh, ahead of time. So let's imagine that this is my work computer, um, and I want to be able to access that Windows machine from home on the weekend. What I'll do is I'm going to actually SSH my machine at home. Okay, so imagine we just, we just need to have a computer at home that has uh, SSH running. And the command is, is this. Uh, so <clears throat> dash capital R. Okay, so let's just pretend this is a public IP address. This is my home computer and it's got Linux running. Now, we've used dash L already. We've seen this in class. We're doing dash R, <clears throat> reverse, remote. The connection is starting from the other side this time when we wanna make our, send our application through. So we'll do something like this, C389, the IP address of the Windows machine, uh, 37 and 3389. So what happens is we ask, make an SSH connection to this IP address, dot .169. And when we get home, we can connect through a uh, front door of 3389 on this machine, localhost. So we send our, our desktop request to it. When it gets a packet on 3389, it knows to go through this SSH connection to the work computer, which is this computer, and then it routes the packet out to the Windows machine. So the thing to note is that this connection must be up for our uh, access to Windows to work, to be successful. So if we push uh, one other thing I should change here <clears throat> is we might have to add this user. If you didn't already, uh, if you're using the Ucali root SSH may not work by default. So add a user, user add Bob, and then give him a password with PSSWD, and then use this command. So let's push enter, okay. So now I have this SSH connection to my home computer. I would leave this up when I leave on Friday and let's say leave this up for the weekend, okay. So we can uh, minimize this and we would, jump, uh, we would jump over to the other computer. So I'm gonna uh, switch my screens again to the other computer. Oh, 
Okay, this is the home computer now. And if we do a netstat, we have an SSH connection from, from the work computer, all right, to home. Also notice that we have this uh, remote desktop port listening on the local machine. So it's a front door. But remember, what happened is we started the SSH connection from work, and now we come home, it's the weekend, and we say, oh, yeah, I need to... Uh, I needed to our desktop to uh, remote desktop to my Windows machine like that. But let's say directly it won't work. So instead, we go like this: three, three, nine, and look at that. We have a connection. So what happened here is our packets hit on three three eight nine, and then they go through this SSH connection. So the traffic is encrypted, comes out the other end, and is routed on to the Windows machine. So this is a reverse SSH VPN. And if we were to pop open Wireshark, oh, we wouldn't see anything. All the traffic is encrypted through uh, SSH. So there's a reverse SSH VPN and a proxy chain with two, uh, two chains in this particular case. Thank you.